Good morning all, my name is Miguel da Costa. I'm the ED Education Fellow at West Mid. Um, I hope to see you around and I hope to speak to you and get to know you all. If you have any questions, come and speak to me. Um, and I hope to hear about your future career development plans and I hope to assist you in any way possible. I've been asked to present a topic on spinal injury assessment and initial management. This is a short presentation. Um, but I hope it clears up the basics. So there is an image of an elderly female who looks like she's potentially fallen down the stairs. Um, I just want you to keep that image in the back of your head and just think of the possible injuries she may be sustaining um, and that should help your future management. So spinal injury. Um, so what is our goal? And quite simply our goal is to prevent further damage. Um, I want everyone, no matter what level you are, to get comfortable with the DICE guidelines. Um, a primary and secondary assessment, um, which com includes a complete CNS examination. Um, very important, go back to your textbooks and get comfortable doing a CNS examination. Also be comfortable with adult and paediatric guidelines. Uh, they do vary. There are two different guidelines on the NICE website. Um, and you are expected to see children as well as adults. Don't be scared of seeing children. There is support, um, but it is good to go in having read and knowing about the topics before you try and manage them. And I've also written there, if you're not comfortable, ask for help early. So that's quite an important point. I don't think you should get to a point where you just are uncomfortable and leave it to the last minute. We are here to help you. We do understand that there are limitations and that you may not have experience in uh, managing certain conditions. So please ask us and I know some of us are busy, but we are there to help you and are there to um, help patients ultimately. Um, I also want you to be comfortable with the American Spinal Injury Association and Payment Scale, so the AIS, and that's basically a clinician administered scale used to classify the severity of injury in individuals with um, SCI, so that's spinal cord injury. So all those topics, that would be your homework, have a read through them, it will make things much easier when you deal with them in practice. So in this image we can see the standard neurological classification of spinal cord injury. This image is from the uh, American Spinal Injury Association and um, it's a good general um, sheet that classifies spinal cord injuries and gives you a breakdown of uh, all the all the relevant CNS findings that we should be documenting and should be able to assess. And I'm back onto the NICE guidelines and I keep highlighting these because they are the standard we use. And um, if you use the NICE guidelines, there's a good chance that everyone else that you will be dealing with is also using the NICE guidelines, so you'll be on the same page be much easier to refer, be much easier to manage with other patients and at least we know um, there's a standardized treatment of care. The NICE guidelines, the NICE guidelines are available online. I will put a link attached below and the NICE guidelines cover all the sorry about all the background noise. So the NICE guidelines cover all the important topics. Um, they are simple, clean and neat. Um, they're not too extensive, uh, but they do give enough information. So have a read through them, get comfortable with them. And also, if you're unsure, always refer back to them. Assessment of a spinal injury. Um, for all trauma patients, I would advise you to get comfortable using a prioritizing sequence. Um, and that's in patients even with suspected trauma. So if there's no history of trauma, 
if you suspect trauma, please use a prioritizing sequence, and that is C for catastrophic hemorrhage, and then A for airway, and inline C-spine immobilization, B for breathing, C for circulation, D for disability or the neurological examination, and E for exposure. A primary assessment, if done correctly, doesn't take very long, and it needs to be documented in the notes, and there's a key in managing all trauma patients. Um, I think we often miss certain injuries and you just need to get into a habit of using a prioritizing sequence. Um, and once you're used to it, it makes life a lot easier. Um, another key point is just because a patient came in walking um, or did not arrive with colon blocks does not mean that they do not have a spinal cord injury or any other injuries that uh, may be linked to that. So I think it's your responsibility um, to assess the patient and uh, rather over be over cautious initially and you can down escalate treatment as opposed to finding yourself halfway through the examination and then realizing that something is wrong. Um, another key point at all stages of assessment protect the person's cervical spine with manual inline spinal immobilization and then particularly particularly during airway intervention and avoid moving the remainder of the spine. So when to carry out full inline spinal immobilization. I'm not going to go through all the points, they're clearly stated in the NICE guidelines. So when in doubt, refer back to the NICE guidelines and um, you will eventually become comfortable with them. So the assessment of cervical spine injury, um, this involves using the Canadian C-spine rule and it stratifies patients into a high, low um, or medium risk uh, for cervical spine injury. Um, it's a simple chart, um, but get used to it and um, it will help you in your management. So the C can of C spine rules do apply in the last guidelines, you will see that there's a parallel between criteria. So the NICE guidelines do cover, do cover the Canada C-spinals. And another thing to be aware of is that the Canadian C-spinals um, do apply to children, but just understand that it's difficult, um, often difficult to assess, and uh, you have to take into account the child's development stage. Um, so assessment of the thoracic and lumbar sacral spine injury. Uh, my take home point is refer back to the NICE guidelines and work your way through the assessment. Um, this way you don't accidentally miss injuries or pathology. Um, and then also always document your important positive and important negative findings. Um, I would stay away from the habit of just saying all normal or unremarkable. Certain things you need to document and be clear in your documentation. So. Before you do a procedure or investigation, document, um, highlight the important positives and important negatives, and after any procedures, do the same. So full inline spinal immobilization. Um, so this is a skill, you don't just learn it, and I hope you don't learn it on a patient in the department. Um, I will attach a link below on a helpful YouTube video that will give you a bit more insight into this. Um, but just a few useful points, so always choose a correct collar, so there are different sizes and it's not one size fits all, I think you need to be comfortable with, with the, the collar we use in the department and if you're unsure how to use them, get one of the nurses to show you how to measure up the collar and how to place the collar. Um, so my second point there is get comfortable in placing a collar on a patient and practice on a friend first. So hopefully the first time you put a collar on would not be on a patient who needs it, but rather one of your friends or colleagues. Um, another important point is do not compromise the airway. So we get fixated on little things. So 
immobilizing the spine at all costs and that can be at the detriment of an airway um, or anything else. So you do want to immobilize the, the spine but do not compromise the airway and also keep the patient comfortable and listen to the patient. And then always reassess the patient after any intervention. We don't have a neurosurgeon on site so you're going to have to call the neurosurgeons at St. Mary's uh, if you have a spinal cord injury and uh, the slide explains how to do it but basically our nearest trauma center is St. Mary's St. Mary's Hospital and if there is a spinal cord injury call St. Mary's speak to the neurosurgeon on call you also have to make a referral and refer a patient so I'll put the link below and basically it's an online referral process and get the images or the CT scan IP'd across to St. Mary's so they can look at the images themselves. Images are not automatically sent across so if there's any injury go across to radiology and get the set images sent off as soon as possible. Um, another important person that you should be aware of is the TTL or the trauma team leader at St. Mary's. So often the patient doesn't just have an isolated C-spine or spinal injury, they might have other injuries. So you need to know that, let the trauma team leader at St. Mary's know that you have a patient um, and they will let you know the further steps on how to transfer the patient and what's required. So don't just call the neurosurgeon, let the neurosurgeon know and also let the trauma team leader know at St. Mary's. Um, take a message, read through the NICE guidelines. They're simple, clear and neat and they'll be invaluable um, in your practice here. You don't need to memorize them, just understand them. Know how to prioritize uh, or learn a prioritizing sequence, so the A, B, C, D, E and get comfortable using that for all patients and all suspected trauma patients. Learn how to measure and place a C-spine collar. So the link will be below. The nurse is also there to help you and they will help you. Um, and it's a great way to meet our team and practice with our team. You're not working in isolation and you do need help. And then learn how to refer a patient online. So that was refer a patient. Um, and then, if you do not have experience managing these cases, uh, I would advise you to watch a senior, uh, a senior colleague, um, get involved. If you see a patient, a trauma patient coming in and you are not confident in managing, please just attach yourself to the senior or come and, have a, come and have a look at what's going on and see what steps need to be taken in, to manage a patient effectively and safely. And for all those interested in trauma, and want to do a course, ATLS is a great course, it's Advanced Trauma Life Support. It's a good course covering the basis of trauma and uh, will give you a good insight into trauma in and out of hospital and management of patients. And that's it.